You just got your first CNC. Now what? When I got my first CNC, every little task felt like a daunting ordeal that I had to figure out from the ground up. Even something as simple as making a tray like this. I didn't know how to do any of it because I was looking at it and you're like, what do I, how do I make this pocket? How do I do this profile cut? It's these things you just don't know and you have to learn all this new stuff. And I want to use this video to show you some of the beginning steps to help you get started on your journey. Assuming your CNC has been set up according to the manual, the first thing you're going to want to do is flatten your spoil board. Every CNC has a spoil board and it being flat is crucial to make sure that all the pieces you cut moving forward are square and flat and in the perfect dimension. For my spoil board, I use MDF, specifically ultralight MDF. And this stuff is about an inch and a quarter thick, I wanna say when I got it. I want it as thick as I can possibly get it because over time, you're gonna be re-flattening this as you get more and more damage into the top. And if you have a thicker piece to start with, it's the less amount of times you have to swap out the material. This is an extremely exaggerated example of why a spoil board is so important. But let's say this piece of MDF was not flat by this much and your bit comes down and it starts cutting and it stays on the same height. It goes across here. Now when you get done, you're gonna pull this out. It's gonna be thicker here than it is here and it could possibly go through the bottom of the material while over here it's still at the right height. That causes a huge problem and it ruins this piece. Now you're probably asking, how am I supposed to flatten my spoil board? And that's a great question, so I wanna answer it. Uh, you're gonna to wanna to use a spoil board flattening bit or a fly cutter, and you're gonna to have to write a program in the software that you use to make that happen. I like to use the biggest bit that my machine can handle. In fact, this bit is too big for this machine to handle and it can't run it. It just removes too much material and it slows the spindle down, which is very dangerous. This is my preferred bit for flattening on here. This has two pieces of carbide. You can rotate the carbide. It's the same technology that you'd have in like a jointer or a planer. It works very nice. It stays very sharp. It's very durable and they're very cheap to replace and you don't have to send them off for sharpening. The bit goes up, over and down and over and up and over and, and does this over and over again until it's flattened the entire spoil board. And the distance that this bit moves over is called step over. And that is determined in percentages of the diameter of the bit. So let's say this is two inches, I think it's two and a half. But if I set the bit to 50% step over, it's gonna move over one inch and then go back down. And that's very important because if you have a bit like this, which is one inch and it moves, has a 50% step over, only moves over a half an inch. That's why it's so important to use the biggest bit that your machine can handle because if you're using this bit as opposed to this bit, it's gonna take much longer. Something that's very important to note about CNC's is that they will only do exactly what you tell them. Nothing more and nothing less. So you need to make sure and not assume that they will know what you're thinking because they don't. And you do that by telling them in your CAM software. I use Vectric. This is computer assisted machining software and this is a great program that I love. It is not cheap and there are free options out there, but I don't use any of those. But if you do, tell me your favorite one down below in the comments. Right out of the gate, I'm setting up this job and the program that we're gonna to use to flatten the spoil board. Let's go down the list of options here real quick and I'll just briefly explain what these are. This is a single sided job and our job size, I happen to know the measurements of my bed off the top of my head because I've done it so many times. It is 49 by 97. We will actually need that size to know the constraints of our job. The thickness does not matter. We could say it's 150 inches, it makes no difference. Because for this job, we're going to be referencing off the next box, which is the Z0 position. That means where does the C and C think we are referencing our Z height or the up and down travel of the, the spindle. For this job, we're gonna do it off the material surface. The XY datum position is where the job references from. So let, I'll show you an example of that here in a minute on the bed, but we're gonna do the bottom left-hand corner because that is typically what you're gonna use 99% of the time on projects, or at least that's what I do. Modeling resolution does not matter at all. Material settings does not matter at all for this. So we're ready, this job is set up. Let's do the next step. For a real brief overview of the spoil board flattening process, this is what we're gonna do. The white represents the size of my actual spoil board. What I've done is made a rectangle that's an inch wider and longer, and that makes it so that my actual bit cuts every part of the spoil board. And here's a quick representation. So this is an inch and a half circle, which represents our fly cutter bit, which we're gonna use to flatten the spoil board. If I cut it only to the size of the spoil board, it's gonna cut to these constraints along this line, 
and then along this line. And you can see here that in this corner, it's not cutting anything because the bit is round, it won't get this corner and it'll do that on all four corners of the spoil board. So now let's set up our tool path. So we're gonna choose this vector, this larger rectangle, and we're gonna use a pocket tool path. We're gonna select the tool we're gonna use for the flattening operation, and that's the bit we already have in there. That's a spoil board bit. It's an inch and a half diameter, like I said earlier. And it just put two in there, let me take one out. We're gonna set the depth of cut to a quarter of an inch, because I can't imagine that your MDF spoil board would be any more than a quarter, quarter inch out of flat. That would be insane if you had a three quarter inch piece of MDF that's a quarter of an inch out. So we're gonna make this be four passes so that each time we go over the spoil board and flatten it, it's only gonna take off a 16th of an inch per pass, 0 0.0625. By making sure we only take off a 16th of an inch at a time, we can run our bit a little faster, but also we're taking off as little material as possible. So what we can do is hope that after one pass, it will remove all the material we need to make our spoil board flat. And we'll know that when the bit goes over every part of the spoil board and it's removing material through the entire pass. If you get your bit to like right here, let's say your bit's right here, and you're not hearing it cut any material, that means that it is no longer cutting in the spoil board and that part is low. So you need to remove all the material around it until it's all the same thickness. Now that we've calculated our tool path, this is the simulation of what it looks like. And now you can get a nice visual representation of what the bit is gonna do. I set mine to do a profile tool path first so I can make sure and see that the bit is gonna cover the entire bed. So let's hit a quick preview of all tools. So it's doing the profile pass and now it's going up and down on a 90 degree raster and it's going across the entire bed. If you get through the first pass and it's cut material off the entire face of the bed, then you can stop your job and your job is done. But if you need to keep going, do this as many times as it takes to remove material down the entire pass of the bit. Now that you've flattened your spoil board, let's talk about tooling. One very important tool outside of the cutters that you're gonna to wanna to invest in is a nice set of digital calipers. We're in the world of thousandths now and it's really important that you know the thickness of your work pieces. Outside of that, let's talk about cutting tools. The bit I used the most when I first started using my CNC was a quarter inch down cut bit. And it's a down cut bit because it spins this way and it pushes the chips down. This is an up cut bit. Obviously as I'm spinning it, it's pulling material up and out and ejecting chips out of there. Because you're ejecting the chips out and getting them out of the way quickly, you are actually able to move this bit a lot faster because it's not pushing against any chips or wood or debris that's in there because it's been ejected out really easily. You can, these bits are really good for finishing work or for cleaning up a profile because they can remove material out of the cut really nicely. This is a compression bit. This is a combination of a down cut on the top and an up cut on the bottom. And you would use this when you're cutting through material. Imagine this is a piece of wood, it's spinning like this. It's pulling up on the bottom and pushing down on the top. And you'd want that because you don't want the bottom of your material to blow out. So by it pulling up, it helps keeping it from blowing out. The next bit you'll want in your beginner kit is a 90 degree V-bit. Obviously it's shaped like a V, that's why it's called a V-bit. This gives you a nice 90 degree cut here. It's nice for details, for signs, for carving out letters. A lot of different softwares have the ability to carve lettering in there. And it actually, what happens because you have a round bit when you get to a corner, it's a rounded corner because it's a round cutter. What's nice with a V-bit is in the software, it'll come to that corner and pull it up like this and it makes it look like a sharp corner. It's really cool. These bits I used a lot when I started, but I don't use them as much anymore and I'm not really sure why now that I think about it. I think it's just the matter of what we make here. But with these bits, you can get a bunch of different degree shapes, <laughs> I don't know what you call it, but you can get them in a 90 degree, a 60 degree, a 45, a 30, a 15. They go up to like three degree uh, V-bits and it's really cool what you can do with some of the lettering on them. We've already discussed this bit, but this is my fly cutter that I used to flatten the spoil board. We only end up flattening the spoil board like once every six months. It's just not something you need to do that often, even with as much as we use our machines here. What I do end up using this for is slabs. I flatten a lot of slabs and this thing is great for it. It's got these two cutter heads, you can rotate them, they work great. It's just a blunt cutting machine and it works perfectly. It makes a perfectly flat surface and it's easy to sand the finish on it. And this is a great tool. 
A lot of machines, a lot of CNC's probably can't run a half inch collet. A lot of these more entry level machines can only run up to a quarter inch collet. So I'll put a link down below for a good slab flattening bit that'll run a quarter inch collet. Earlier I mentioned that making something as simple as a valet tray can feel daunting when you're first getting going on the CNC. We're gonna make one real quick. I wanna show you how simple a process like this is and when you look at something or see something in your head that you wanna turn into a real piece, how you can start from something in your brain and turn it into a real functional piece. What's really cool about some of these projects on the CNC is that you can just use random offcuts. I took this piece of English elm and I jointed it and planed it. Its thicknesses, I wrote down here, 0.65 inches. It doesn't matter how thick your piece is, you can adjust that easily in the software, but we're gonna try to make a one or two of these trays out of this piece of wood, and this is seven and a half inches wide and 19 inches long, and it's 0.65 inches thick. One nice feature on the valet trays is this radius on the inside. It's really sweet because you can pull things out of here like coins or keys or whatever you've got in here but you can't attain that with an end mill because it's a square bottom, you'll get a square cut like you have on the outside. So what you end up wanting to use is something with a radius bit. This is a half inch ball nose bit, which is what we're gonna use. I prefer these for radius to corners. It's not gonna give us such a dramatic sweeping radius here, but it'll be plenty and it'll work great for a little valet tray. With our piece in hand and our dimensions written down, I'm gonna set up the job in the software so our width is 7.5, our length, our height is 19 inches, <coughs> and our thickness is 0.65. We're gonna set our Z0 position to reference off the machine bed because we're gonna use my other CNC, which really only works off of the machine bed. So let's hit okay here. And we wanna make some little valet trays here. We're just gonna do two, and we're gonna make them like four and a half inches by 7.5 inches. And then we will set those up by putting them in the middle of that and then go right there. We're gonna make our first valet tray and we're going to round or radius our outside corners and we can do that real quickly here. Radius to external mobile 0.25. So this is our outside vector, which will determine the overall width and height of the piece. So we're gonna make our inside pocket vector. So we're gonna select that outside one and we're gonna do an offset and that will bring it, we're not gonna go out, we're gonna go in a quarter of an inch and we're not gonna create sharp outside corners. We're gonna go like that. And then we're gonna go in here, select our in, inner vector. We're gonna change that to the same thing, apply. So now we have a matching radius on the inside and the outside. We'll take both of these and copy them and we'll paste them up now we're gonna select our pocket vectors and we're gonna do a pocket toolpath and we're gonna to set that cut depth to 0.4 inches and we're not gonna use the spoil board bit. That's gonna absolutely be the wrong tool for this. That's gonna take off too much material. We're gonna use a half inch end mill and that's gonna be this guy right here. We're gonna set this to do three passes for this cut just so it's more in line with what a, uh, an entry level machine would need to cut. So it's cutting 0.13 inches per pass with a half inch bit. So that's gonna do that. We've got, we'll just leave it on a climb cut. We'll ramp that in an inch and set that. And now that we've got our roughing pocket tool path, I wanna add the bit that I'm gonna use to make the nice radius on the inside. So we're gonna select a second bit and we're gonna use this bit right here. Now that we've got our inside pocket tool paths figured out, let's figure out our outside profile cut so we can actually cut this piece out of the wood. So we're gonna use a profile tool path and we're gonna cut the 0.65 inches, which is the thickness of our material so we get all the way through. We're not gonna use a 3 8 compression. We're gonna use a quarter inch end mill. We are gonna use a quarter inch compression end mill so that when we go through the bottom side of the material it doesn't blow out the wood like we talked about earlier. I'm gonna add some tabs to this so that when the bit cuts all the way through the material, the piece doesn't actually break free from the workpiece and come loose and then runs risk of getting ruined by the actual CNC machine. So I've placed those in four locations on the piece and now we are basically ready to start cutting out this valet tray. Now that we've got all of our tool pathing set up, we're gonna run a quick preview of everything to see how this is gonna look. There, it's cutting out the main pocket. That's gonna be three passes. It's gonna do the second pocket. Then it's gonna come back with that rounded ball nose bit, give us the profile we want. 
and then it's gonna come around and cut out the outside profile. And there are our valet trays, pretty cool. Adding a CNC to your shop can be a very daunting task. And if you put the time in to learn how to use your new machine and how to get really good at it, you can find that it opens up new doors and new opportunities that you couldn't have before.